Hi, I'm Donna from Tri-State Bird Rescue and Research. We hope that you've been enjoying our virtual open house so far. And coming up next, we are going to visit with the Indian Run Environmental Education Center. They use biofacts from animals and live birds to teach about the environment and wildlife all around us. Uh, so we're going to meet some of their very, very special ambassador birds in just a minute. I do want to let you know before we start that Indian Run, like all of our participants in Virtual Open House, do have the correct permits and permissions from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife and from their state agencies in order to possess these native wild birds. So they are properly trained and they have all their permits. So I know that you're going to enjoy meeting these birds and learning more about them. Hi everyone, I'm Dawn White from Indian Run Environmental Education Center and I first want to thank Tri-State Bird Rescue for inviting me to their virtual open house. Uh, Indian Run is based out of my home in Glenmore, Pennsylvania. It's a small business and the animals I have live in large enclosures in my backyard and we do outreach programs to different community functions. So I brought three feathered ambassadors with me today to share with you. And all the birds I have, the raptors I have, I have five, they're all non-releasable due to handicaps they have from injuries they sustained in the wild. So they've all come from wildlife rehabilitation centers um, and to live with me. So the first one I have is Trace. Trace is a broad-winged hawk. And Trace came to me from a center in West Virginia. And he was migrating, they believe, so we don't even know what state he was actually from. And he was hit by a car and he has a right wing injury and he's blind in his right eye. Uh, when he opens his wings and you see some of his other feathers, he's got a bit of problems with some of his feathers growing in properly sometimes. So that's what you're seeing there. So he can fly. Um, they all, in their large enclosures, he can fly around. But as a hawk, he hunts with his eyesight and they have about eight times better eyesight than we do. So when you don't have that binocular vision and that depth perception, um, it would be hard to do that on his own. Broadwings are found in forests and they're very good at maneuvering among the trees to find their prey. They'll eat a lot of rodents, but also things like frogs and small birds. In captivity, all these birds get fed um, thawed out rats or mice. And if there's anything found in the yard that is deceased, we can put in there. Uh, he has caught a toad in his enclosure before, a live toad, uh, on his own. So Trace also has that hooked beak like any raptor and sharp talons and very strong feet. So raptors catch and kill their prey with those feet, tear it into pieces they can swallow whole with the sharp hooked beaks. So as you might know, the name Broadwinged Hawk, they are hawks with very wide, wide wings so they can soar, and a wide tail. Broad wings are a little high strung, especially the males, which is uh, kind of why we think he's a male, but they have beautiful patterning on their feathers. So we'll put Trace back and I will share a few other animals with you and I can also share some of the feathers um, and some other biofacts with these, with these birds. So here we have Delwyn. Delwyn is a barred owl. And barred owls are probably one of my favorite owls. Uh, he has a lot of character. Delwyn is a forest owl. So they're actually found in conifer forest where there's a stream or a wetland because they not only eat rodents, but they also will hunt frogs and crayfish and things like that. So Delwyn weighs about a pound. So when you see owls, Hawks as well, but really owls look so much heavier when you're seeing all those feathers. And they really are just layers and layers of feathers. They're actually very light. He weighs a pound or in the winter a little over a pound and that's it. Um, with his layers of feathers, if I were to stick my finger down uh, through the feathers on the top of his head, the feather layer would go up to my second knuckle. So that's how thick they are. So if you can see Dell, he'll spread his wings a little bit here oh, and fly. And his wide tail and wide wings, so he's still able to fly through the forest pretty well. He blends in well with the tree bark and the trees he lives in. And believe it or not, a bird this size will live in the hollows of trees. That's where they nest and, lay, and um, raise their young. So with all owls, um, they have a facial disc, very large eyes, and 
If you notice, since he's looking directly at the camera, Delwyn is actually missing his left eye. So he was found on the side of the road in York County, Pennsylvania, and we could the rehabilitator could not save his left eye. So he is lacking vision there. Um, it is actually sunken back in his head, so the eyeball's there, but it's not functioning. Um, so owls have decent vision, but up close it's actually very poor. So they make up for that in the little tiny feathers they have on the sides of their beaks. So after they catch their prey and they go to eat it, those little feathers on the side of the beak will uh, be able to tell them whether it's still moving or still alive and actually help the owl out. Owls hunt with their hearing, mostly. They're going to sit on a perch real quietly and listen for prey moving below and then fly down very quietly again and catch it. So in a little while I'll show you some owl feathers where we can see the comb-like fringes on the flight feathers and owl's flight feathers are also covered with a little layer of down so it makes owls completely silent when they are flying. Now most owls hoot, um, the common ones, uh, great horned owls, um, screech owls do a little bit of a whinny but this is a typical hoot owl too believe it or not. If you're a birder, most birders know that as who cooks for you, who cooks for you all. And then they do a lot of other strange sounds like this. And around here, Delwyn actually has a friend. Um, there has been a barred owl in our woods calling almost every night doing the who cooks for you, who cooks for you all to him. And he responds with little hoots and hollers. Um, so it's been very interesting this spring. Um, Delwyn also has feathers straight down to his toes. Oh, buddy, I'm sorry. He has feathers straight down to his toes, so he does very well in our winters. He does not, he's not a species that would migrate. Um, the other owls you see in your forest are, like I said, the great horned and the screech owls. They're also pretty common. So thank you, Delwyn, for joining us today. We'll put him back and we have one more bird to share. So this is Mouse. Mouse is a common barn owl. Uh, barn owls look very, very different from other owls. They are their own species. They have this very thin frame, and if you compare her especially to that barred owl you saw, she's obviously not as fluffy. Totally different color. Uh, barn owls nest in abandoned buildings, so they are the color of the wood grain. Uh, barn owls also seem to have smaller eyes, and I mentioned the facial disc on the barred owl you could really see, but is very prominent on a barn owl. That round uh, circle of feathers, and hers is actually pronounced with darker feathers around her face, and it's very deep. So barn owls may actually have the best hearing of almost any animal in the world, according to some scientists, uh, because they have that facial disc, their ears are actually asymmetrical, so one higher than the other, and able to help them pinpoint their prey. There's been a lot of studies done with barn owls, and they can actually hunt their prey using extreme, uh, in extreme darkness with very little light. So it's pretty impressive. Uh, they fly over open fields to hunt their prey. She has very long wings and a short tail. And again, as an owl, extremely silent, if not completely, when they're hunting in complete darkness. Uh, barn owls here in Pennsylvania, different parts of Pennsylvania, they're not quite as common um, due to the lack of agricultural fields, which is really what they need for a habitat and to be hunting. Um, they rely on those. They cannot hunt over you know, mowed lawns, horse fields, things like that. They need the agriculture. That's where they're finding all those rodents. So they're very much farmer's friends. So like I said, in different parts of Pennsylvania, they are declining. Um, scientists, homeowners, our Pennsylvania Game Commission will put up nest boxes, which barn owls do use if it's in the right area, and that's helping the population in different areas. And you see Mouse is very active right now. She actually sees her, her um, carrier way over here, and she likes to go in there to hide during the day, so she's checking that out. But it also gives you an ability to watch how their heads move and how um, their whole body kind of takes things and moves around. Because owls' eyes are so large, and that goes for any raptors, they don't have extra muscles to move them inside their head. 
So they compensate by having extra vertebrae in their neck and they're able to move their necks extreme positions that we wouldn't be able to do. So they are majorly mouse hunters and moles and voles. That's what they hunt a lot of. Um, barn owls are extremely good for having around in the environment to keep the rodent population down. Now, unlike other owls, a barn owl's call is very different. They scream. So, not something you want to hear on a pitch black night, kind of scary. Oh. And that's compared to our little screech owls. Which I do have one, not here with me today, not out with me today. That's a screech owl. And then our great horned. Okay. So, uh, in seeing these birds, I hope you enjoyed um, our little presentation here. And um, we'll have some biofacts as well. But um, if you have questions or you want more information, uh, my email is dwhite at indianruneec.org. And again, I'm from Indian Run Environmental Education Center. We do have a few presentations up on our YouTube channel as well. If you search the center's name, you'll find that. So we'll put mouse back and we'll share some biofacts. So I have some biofacts I can share with you. Here is a red-tailed or red-shouldered hawk's foot. I'm not sure which species it is. And as with all raptors, they use it to catch and kill their prey. So it's the strength in the feet, not as much those sharp talons that are really killing um, the prey. Red tails are very common around here. And I have one in my care. This is one of her molted feathers. And she came into me very young, so she actually didn't have her red tail yet until her first molt. So she was about two years old when she got her red tail. And if we check out those owls we were talking about, I actually have a replica great horned owl skull. And you can see the huge eye sockets. So in all raptors, they have such large eyes, as we talked about, that they don't have extra muscles to move those eyeballs inside their head. So they compensate by rotating their head in extreme directions that we cannot do. But in the barred owl you saw, and also a screech owl I have, this bony ring is what broke. Uh, it collapsed upon impact with a car, and that could not be fixed. So that is why those birds are not releasable, because they lost sight in the, that eye. And here, if you look closely, you might see a screech owl in that hollow of a tree. So, of course, masters of camouflage, most of our owls. And um, they're more often heard than seen. Screech owls nest in hollows, the barred owl, as I mentioned. So it's very important to keep dead trees standing if it is safe, of course, because it does provide, they provide habitats for many different animal species. And I have a few owl feathers. You can really see that camouflage. So this is our great horned owl. I have a mounted great horned owl. I do not have a live one. And a little screech owl feather. And the barred owl that you saw. And let's see if I can focus well enough. Be a lot easier up close in person, wouldn't it? Uh, here we have the barn owl feather. In, as in all owl feathers, we talked about those comb-like fringes on the edges to really help them fly silently. I'm hoping you can kind of see that along the edge here. So owl feathers are very soft and they have those fringes as well. And with my barn owl mouse, I realized I neglected to mention her handicap. She actually does not have one. Uh, she lived at Great Valley Nature Center in Pennsylvania here near Phoenixville. And when they closed, they had to place all their birds and um, Mouse came to me, and what we could find was that she was born to parents who were handicapped, um, but the Game Commission didn't release her into the wild because they were not sure of the genetics. So she's basically an imprint. She's lived among humans all her life, cared for by humans, and is not releasable. So again, I thank you for joining me, and I hope you will Get in touch if you have any questions or comments. I would love to hear them. And hopefully I'll see you next year at Tri-State Bird Rescue's open house. Thank you.